Hello and welcome to NIMS and Associates Snapshot on production orders and manufacturing for Acumatica. Our snapshot is going to cover the following agenda. We're going to go through how to create production orders from MRP sales orders and, and manually. We're going to go through how to process production orders for material and for labor. And we're going to discuss move transactions. Move transactions are what record progress on production orders and also cause production orders to be completed and move inventory into finished goods. We're going to create production orders from sales orders, from MRP, and manually. Production orders can be made three ways in Acumatica. The first way is from sales orders. When an item is marked to allow for creation during the sales order process, When an inventory item is marked for make to order item, production orders can be created from a sales order. During the sales order entry process, inventory items that are marked for make for production can be entered into the sales order. Because of that inventory setting, mark make for production, the system knows that we may want to create a production order for this. So there's a special flag on the line of the sales order. Once the order is saved, the system would allow you to create production orders. It should be noted that the inventory that is associated with the production order is hard allocated to the sales order. In other words, this sales order wants the inventory from that particular production order that will be created. You'll see when I create the production orders, a dialog box appears asking me to create the production orders. Tell it to create. The production order has been assigned to the sales order line. So there's a hard link between the sales order and the production order. So referencing the production order from the sales order and vice versa is easily done. Sales orders can also be generated from MRP. In this case, I've already generated MRP to save time. But if we look at the MRP display and focus on the inventory item, we can see that the system wants us to create production orders. I know this because the source is manufacturing. In the configuration for the inventory item BLK BFW, we've told Acumatica that this item is normally produced and manufactured. To create the production orders, I simply select the MRP item and tell it to manufacture. Production orders can also be created manually. So if I navigate to production order maintenance, I can hit the plus sign, assign a production order type, put in the inventory item that I'd like to produce, let the system know which warehouse and which location the finished goods for this item will be produced, the quantity that I'm going to produce, and I'm done. On a production order, there's several settings that we should talk about. We've told the system that we want to create 12 units of the BLK BFW banana. We've also told the system that we want to start this order on 325. Now, if we want to start it later, we can change the dates. The scheduling method is either start on that date, finish on a date, or you can enter in user definable dates. On the reference tab of the production order, you can see that the system has found the most current bill of material. So in the course of creating the production order, Acumatica has gone and searched for related bill of materials to the item BLK BFW. The default bomb that's assigned to the BLK BFW is assigned to the production order. The bomb revision is assigned to the production order 
based on revision dates and within the bill of material itself. So the most current revision date will pull in to the production order. On the production order, production detail will show us what is actually going to be produced. You'll note that this looks very much like the bill of material with operations and inventory that is associated and related to the operations. In this case, we have a single operation, the assembly operation, that has these raw materials associated with it. We are not back flushing inventory at this point. The back flushing flag would be here. That can be toggled on and off. These defaults come in from the bill of material. Back flushing means when I do a move transaction against operation 0010, not only is it going to put the finished good inventory into inventory, it's going to also at the same time take out the raw materials. So back flushing happens during a material move transaction. Processing material usage using the back flushing method or manual material issues. If a production order has its lines flagged for back flushing, the consumption of the material on the production order happens when a move transaction happens against the operation that the inventory is associated with. So if we look at order one, two, three, we can see that it's in a planned state. I'm gonna go ahead and release this production order. Releasing an order simply tells the system that it's ready to be worked on. To create a move transaction on this production order, I can navigate to the create move transaction option. This option is also available as a menu item in production orders. I put in the quantity that I'm going to complete. In this case, it's going to be 10 of the original 12 that were on the production order. This item happens to be lot tracked, and you can see that it's going to assign a lot number here. And it's requiring an expiration date. At this point, you can also record scrap. But by releasing this, because I only have one operation code on the production order, 10 units of finished good are going into inventory all 10 units worth of raw materials have also been taken out of inventory. So it's kind of a way that you can record the material usage and the finished good at the same time. If back flushing is not assigned on the production detail, note that we have no back flushing on this. Materials can be issued to the production order through the process of material issues. The first step though, is to release the order. Releasing materials is a convenient way to do it because the Acumatica system will focus on material that is on the production order. So if I wanted to release the quantities that were already on the production order, I could change them if I needed to. Selecting all will produce all the material transactions related to that production order. This process has moved raw materials out of inventory and put them on the production order. I would still need to process a move transaction to complete the finished goods. Processing labor. There's three ways to process labor. Manual entry, for recording time, you can do clock entry, which allows a user to log in and then log out of production orders. And a third note, you can also do it via the mobile app. We're not going to be covering the mobile app today. To record labor manually, you can navigate to production orders and then to the labor entry. The labor entry is a way that you can assign labor to individual production orders. Labor is always assigned to an operation code. Labor is assigned to an employee. Labor shifts are recognized and supported. And then the start time and the end time. 
can be entered. By releasing this transaction, we're recording one hour of labor against production order 121 for operation 10. The cost of the labor can be determined in a couple of ways. This individual employee can have a cost per hour. The operation ID can have a cost per hour. Either way would work in moving cost over to the production order for labor. In addition to manually entering time, Acumatica has a feature called clock entry. Clock entry is where a user can go into the system and clock in and out of projects. So in this case, I'm going to clock out. I can clock into a new project by selecting the production number and the operation and then tell the system to clock in. The system will be recording time up until the point that I clock out. Move transactions. Move transactions in Acumatica production orders are used to indicate progress on a production order. Typically, a production order must have at least one operation. If there are more than one operation on a production order, the process of telling Acumatica's production system that we're done with one operation and moving on to the next operation is done with a move transaction. But move transactions can do more. If back flushing is enabled on inventory items associated with a operation, the move transaction will also back flush material at the point that it run. On the last operation on a production order, the final operation on a production order, when a move transaction is performed against that, finished goods are created. Finished goods are placed into inventory at the point of the final move transaction. Move transactions can be performed in a couple of different ways. The first way is directly from the production order. If I open an existing production order up from the production order itself, you can see that I can select a move transaction. So the system recognizes open operations and the quantity left to be completed at that operation. If there's no changes to the quantity, that would work. Now, this is the final last operation on this production order. So Acumatica is actually going to create finished goods inventory once this move transaction is processed. Therefore, it's asking me what warehouse and what location I want to put that finished goods. It's also asking me, because this inventory item is lot tracked, what lot number to start using, and what the expiration of the lot is. Releasing this move transaction will complete and create finished goods. Move transactions can also be done from a menu object in the production order system. There's a menu item called move. This is the same screen that we navigated to from the production orders. The only difference is that when you do it from the production orders, it's conveniently filled in on the lines. I don't have to select a production order and the operation is pre-filled in as well. In this case, the system recognizes that we've already put 10 units into finished goods and it only wants us to build two more. Since this is the last operation on this production order, I'm adding two units of finished goods to our inventory. Production cost. Cost for production is divided up into three elements. There's estimated cost, which comes in from the bill of material and current inventory cost. There's actual cost, which is the cost of labor, materials, burden that have been assigned to the production order. And then a cost variance, which is the difference between the estimated cost and the actual cost. Cost variances help you control uh, costs on individual production orders. In production order maintenance on the totals tab, there are three columns of data, planned, actual, and variance. Planned means when the production order is created, Acumatica goes out to the bill of material, pulls in the raw materials, 
labor and any burdens that we've got on the bill of material and estimates what the cost per unit is going to be. Our total labor cost will be that, material that, or the quantity that, for a unit cost of that. It's a great method for checking to see as finished goods are completed, whether or not our cost is in line with expectations. The actual cost column shows actual costs that have been assigned to the production order. The variance cost column tells us if there's any differences between planned and actual. In this case, we have a $7.50 labor variance. Thank you for checking out NIMS & Associates Snapshot on Production Orders. If you liked it, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.